I'm at the kitchen sink. We're going to make up our water for washing out the airbrush and uh, just a little dab of dishwashing soap and a little splash of my salvage alcohol. That was stuff that I used in my little um, ultrasonic cleaner and I ran it through a coffee filter to strain out most of the big chunks and poured it back in. So this will be my spray out bucket and there's my wash out amount to clean the brush. And we're going to try using the uh, the small paint cup today instead of using the big bottle because that seemed like we used very little paint and had a whole bunch left to take out. So we'll go out to the spray booth and I'll show you what I got. And we pretty much got the same setup as we had last time except my wife has commandeered most of the painting table for her little project. But I have an old computer case as my wind block because it was a little windier out here today. Trusty red board and we've got the paint cup stuck to the airbrush. I didn't really find any instructions in the manual about how to attach all this stuff. So I'm assuming that's the way it goes and we'll give it a shot. I've never used one before. What I decided that the stripe in the pictures runs along, you know, through this grill area and a bit below it across the cab windows and then it it angles down and goes out the nose and down the middle. Well this base coat that I gave is not quite white enough to give me the effect that I want so I'm going to run a stripe down both sides and get that a little whiter and brighter and same on the nose and then we'll mask that off. Now the back end I'm not really sure because I've never seen a picture of the back end, whether it has the stripe going all the way across or does the stripe end at the rear and this is just either gray or blue I don't know but we're going to shoot it as though the stripe goes all the way across and, uh, and give that a shot and if somebody comes up with information that says that's not the way it is mask it and reshoot it whatever color it's supposed to be. So I'll try and keep you guys centered up on the frame a bit better than I did last time. Let me put my gloves on and load the, the cup and I'll be right back. Okay, got the cup loaded up with paint. We're going to take a test shot on my, my little experimental board here and make sure I've got my line width down that I want and remember not to tip the cup because now I can't just go wherever I want. But we can vary this and make a pretty good stream and cover a small area and uh, I think we'll, it'll work well. I'm really impressed with this little guy. So let's see what we can get. better. See if I'm in the frame there. So I'm trying to go about halfway down on the panel below the grills. I don't want it to get too thick because I don't want to obscure all that nice detail. Okay and then we're going to shoot the corner. I'm just going to shoot the whole front end and get that pretty bright. And I think 
that will work and this really does not take much paint at all to do something like this. The other day when I was doing this I was shooting with about 30 psi. Today I dropped the pressure down to 20, 25 And, uh, oh, we got a little goober there. A little spit from the gun. But I think I'm going to call that good. And we'll uh, set it aside and let it dry while I clean this thing out. So, really, I did not use very much paint. And I didn't mix this with any thinner today. We're just using it straight poly scale and it seemed to work pretty all right. Oops, drip, drip, drip out of there. Throw that in our bucket. I've got the brush all pretty much cleaned out, um, but I took the little nozzle off because I can notice there's a little bit of buildup in there. So we'll rinse that real good and wipe it out with a towel. I don't know if everybody disassembles their gun every time, but I like to at least pull it apart, <coughs> take the tip off, the disperser or whatever you want to call that thing, and then usually I pull that off it, and I'll pull that off. And I just like looking at the orifices and the o-ring, make sure it's all clean. Look inside the, the gun, make sure there's no paint residue there, and then be very careful when you put this back on, and taking it off, that you don't bend that needle. And I just give that just a snug. Okay, so then I pull this loose, I flip this over, and spray the last little bit out of the siphon tube and then look down in there to see if there's any paint residue. Well, let's see how good this turned out. Let's hold this up. All right. The, uh, it's definitely more solid or even and much denser, much more opaque. So I think that'll work pretty well. Let that dry real good and I found some masking materials. I've been having trouble finding the stuff that I remember reading about when I was in high school which is photo frisket film and remember I said I needed some pieces of foam for my little uh, clothespin clamp, stand, whatever. They had these on sale. They're bulletin borders waves and they're a foam material. Two bucks. I got tons of them. I can use them for building mock-ups or who knows what all. Anyway, I was going to cut a couple little pieces of this foam and glue it on the end of these to give me a little stiction when I'm holding uh, car bodies or buildings or whatever. Plastic pipettes for mixing paint colors, that sort of stuff. The traditional glass eyedroppers are getting hired to find, but these I think will work pretty good. You can uh, just you know drop, figure out how many drops of whatever color to put in. Small parts storage, couplers, little trucks, truck side frames, detail parts, all that sort of stuff been looking for, these are Craftmates lockables, they are little storage bins. They have a little lock so that stuff won't come flying out when you don't want it. So that's kind of cool. See, little bar, you push that down, it locks and 
they can't come open. The fronts are rounded so that you, your little parts, if you put wheel sets in there or whatever, you can get one out at a time. And the other thing is that the dividers are molded in, little dividers are molded in, so that parts can't migrate from one to the other. So I got two of these. The other one is a bead storage case. Again, a locking little case. Four small parts, good little locks on them. These are screw top little containers. Now there's two big ones, but they come apart like so. So you can get at whatever. And I thought for ballast, for I don't know what. Now I bought these extra bottles at Michael's as well. They are Artist Loft. I think they were seven bucks for the four of them. Something like that. And I haven't really tried them out. I haven't even unpacked them yet. I want to see if they're the same thread as this. If, if I'm lucky, look at that. They will be. So there's a source of extra bottles. They're a little bigger, but that's okay. If you're if you got a batch of paint that you've mixed up, a color for your railroad or whatever, good little storage bottles to put your put your extra paint in. So these will go in that other little case with all the other paints. The three things I got to try and mask with there's this incredible white mask, which is for, it's a liquid latex stuff with an applicator. Kind of pricey, 18 bucks. I'm not sure if it'll work. We'll give it a whirl, but that's one of the products. The second thing I got was this artist tape. And I believe it's just regular masking tape, but it is very very thin if you can see that it's probably about an eighth of an inch or so wide maybe yeah it says it's eighth inch wide it's uh, 324 inches this is 17.99 now it says it's vinyl tape on the receipt so it's again kind of pricey but somebody recommended vinyl tape to me so we'll see how that goes and then the third thing I got was Martha Stewart's crafts See that one? This is adhesive stencil film. And that is a 28 inch, 11 inch wide by 3 yards long. Now I don't know how adhesive it is. So there, I got it loose. It's uh, reasonably tacky. Hope it doesn't leave much of a residue. I'll We'll see about this. I'm going to try the vinyl tape first and see how that works. And if any of you guys have tips on how to do your masking and striping and that sort of thing, or if I should just do a decal, um, you know, give me a shout out on YouTube or on Train Life and let me know how you guys do it. So we'll talk to you later. Thanks.